Hello, this is Dr. Ketan Parel from St. John University. This video uh, demonstrating uh, fuse deposition modeling 3D printer is a part of uh, the faculty development program by Anand Pharmacy College. So today I am going to demonstrate the field material, hot melt extrusion, uh, structural analyzer and fuse deposition modeling 3D printing. Uh, during my talk, I have already discussed about different types of 3D printing, SLA like uh, SLS, uh, inject 3D printing and all that, the advantage and disadvantage of 3D printing, their applicability into different industry and the future perspective of the 3D printing. So that everything I will cover during my talk. Uh, 3D printing I think used since very long for automobile, for toys, for ar architectural purpose or medical device. The things which makes it different for pharmaceutical purpose is incorporation of a drug because for them any polymeric material or metal or anything is fine which is 3d printable for us uh, we have to find a way how we can incorporate a drug successfully the purity uh, uh, the, the other impurities uh, generated while processing the temperature and other excipient competitors there are lots of things comes in between while you incorporate the drug into the 3d printed fuse and that's that's the challenging part of the 3d printing scale up and everything maybe we will discuss during the, our talk. So let's discuss first. Uh, it, uh, there are different feed material as we go through the uh, uh, SLS or SLA 3D printing or inject 3D printing. I will be talking about the fused deposition modeling and that's where my research lab is actually working on. So the feed material uh, for FDM uh, 3D printing is uh, filament. Uh, this is approximately 1.5 mm filament so how do we get those filament and how we incorporate the drug so there are there are thousands of articles uh, describing a hot melt extrusion for enhancing the solubility uh, improving the drug release as well as making the sustainable doses for uh, form so hm is well established technology now we can say uh, almost we have some you know, five to six commercial product based on hot melt extrusion so this is process 11 uh, by thermoscientific uh, that's what we have so in here, I think this is a feeder where we put polymer, drug, plasticizer. There are different kinds of uh, pharmaceutical grade polymer and that's what is make, making it different from conventional 3D printing for all other purpose. For pharmaceutical purpose, you need to have an FDA approved excipient and that's what we have to use in the limit of inactive ingredient. Uh, and, and so far what we know is like HPMC, uh, polyvinyl pyrolidone, polyvinyl alcohol, the eudrachids, and that kind of polymer we usually use. The key is the miscibility of a drug. So when we do this processing, uh, it is ideal that the drug is molecularly dispersed or it is in amorphized state within the polymer. So we can uh, adjust some processing uh, parameter like temperature uh, for different zone. There is almost seven zone and then we can adjust the different temperature based on the Tg of a polymer, melting point of a drug. And at the same time, there are material attributes uh, like the polymer and the drug chemistry and everything, the solubility parameter plays in between. So the first part of the FDM 3D printing, you should have a nice polymer, uh, uh, drug polymer mixture, uh, which are miscible and gives you a, a transparent, nearly transparent filament where your drug is evenly distributed or molecularly distributed. So uh, with that processing, we get the filament of uh, uh, Continuous, we get the filament of 1.5 mm. We cut into appropriate length. Uh, then, and this filament, um, based on the drug, this is a common in loaded filament. So, uh, uh, some of them are uh, more flexible, some of them are brittle, some of them are very hard, based on the kind of polymer, kind of plasticizer, and kind of drug. So, that's what we have to play around. And, and, and uh, this is the first step that we get this filament of appropriate or desired attributes that can be uh, printable uh, using 3D printer. So we will move on to the next step. So this is the second part of uh, fuse deposition modeling 3D printing. It's, it's advisable, not necessarily you must have it, but it's recommended. So what is recommended here that the filament you get from hot melt extrusion is brittle, it's elastic or what kind of property it has. So usually we check the tensile strength, young modulus, elasticity and everything because we have to feed this drug loaded polymeric filament to the feeder 
uh, the gear should easily accept the filament and melt it and print it and that's where we need a filament which you can print easily uh, reproducibly without blocking the uh, the printing gear so uh, this is the machine uh, texture analyzer that's where we measure the this is a three point band test uh, setup where we break the filament and we check all the strength associated with it and then we pull it to check the elasticity uh, of it and we measure the force uh, or distance curve and everything so this is kind of a filament where we can say it's it's brittle when you when you just just, just study it you can break it uh, without any effort and this is the risky uh, uh, a filament if you put it into the uh, fdm printing uh, it might break without printing the material it might block uh, the printing nozzle on the other hand this is like a shoelace is that's that's it's too rubbery uh, so this kind of filament and if you i'm not sure you can see it uh, clearly the drug has been or a plasticizer has been precipitated out of the filament the surface is so rough and this is like a very flexible this kind of filament as well is not something uh, uh, easily printable so you can like let's say narrow it down so let's say you have 100 different combinations or let's say 10 15 batches you can definitely uh, narrow it down by using this machine that this is printable this is not printable this drug with this polymer with this plasticizer may or may not work and then so if you have this good if you don't have it then uh, just put it into the machine and anyways it's not printable uh, the machine will tell you that it's breaking and then it's more of a troubleshooting but the worst part is uh, if you block the nozzle you have to buy uh, the heating block again and then you have to open the machine then you have to feed everything so uh, the cleaning is it's will uh, it's time consuming and that's where if you have this it will save some of the time and you can see okay this is the strength these are good for 3d printing and you can uh, save lots of time and as well as uh, resources and material as well